What's going on internet? IG here again today with another of the Ubuntu family release and this one is the KDE desktop. We all know it as Kubuntu. <laughs> So Kubuntu 13.10, I'm going to be taking a look at all of the different derivatives of the official Ubuntu family because I haven't really done that before with an Ubuntu release and I figured, yeah, it's about time. All of the different desktop environments have evolved in one way or another and because Unity isn't evolving that much, I figured, hey, let's take a look at the others. So Kubuntu brings the KDE Plasma desktop 4.11 to the table and let's have a look at what features and improvements that can offer us. Okay, so Kubuntu 13.10, it's rocking the KDE 4.11 desktop environment and what does that mean? Basically, a couple little tweaks and improvements on the performance side of things. KDE continues to get smoother and cleaner as the code base advances towards the KDE Plasma desktop 5. And I think the reason for this, I'm not entirely sure, but at least my hunch is that because Qt and QML, the background engines for a lot of what KDE does, are getting faster and more optimized for mobile devices, that means we're seeing a payout here on the desktop because animations get smoother, things get faster, etc. Now that's certainly not to say it's not a resource hog because there are plenty of resources being used by KDE here, trust me. So Kubuntu 13.10 also brings a new network manager to the fore, which is much cleaner and much simpler than the one that they previously used with all those crazy options. It's a simple list here of the connections you have available to you, and then you can hit the wrench if you want to customize those options a little bit more. Now, it's also worth mentioning the Muon Discover Package Manager or Software Center, whichever you prefer. Basically, this is the KDE answer to the Ubuntu Software Center. Now, if you've watched my review on Ubuntu 13.10, link down in the description below, then you'll know that I whinged a little bit about the Software Center not having moved much since the original release of Ubuntu, oh, what was it, like 10.10 .10 or whatever it was. Well, this Software Center, I mean, okay, it's not the prettiest out there, but it, it's functional, it works. As you can see here, it has some nice smooth animations here. We have screenshots that will load eventually when my internet decides to work properly. And you've got some ratings and some descriptions here. So it's set out a lot nicer than the Ubuntu Software Center. And you can see here that once, I, once I'm happy with an application, I hit install and Bob's your uncle. It is the tiniest bit stodgy. I'm not sure if that's just because I'm running this inside a virtual box, but I certainly wasn't having any issues when I was running this on native hardware. So as you can see, the top rated applications show up at the top as they should. And then you've also got on the home page here, you've got a few featured applications that they reckon would go well on your KDE desktop, like Digicam, for example, very good suggestion. And you can also see we've got popularity contests and best rating, best rated applications here as well. So to be honest, I do prefer Muon Discover Software Center to the one that is provided in Ubuntu. It's cleaner, it's smoother, and it's clearer with uh, what exactly you are installing and what the application is about. KDE's telepathy has also undergone some nice reworking since the last release. Apparently they fixed a lot of the issues and they've improved the notification system so that when you're running chats here on your desktop through whatever account you choose, as you can see here, you can add quite a few different accounts then now the notifications will work much better with the KDE Notification Center like the one that you see here. Now one of the features that I really love about KDE is the fact that they've had online integration with their apps for quite some time now. As you can see here then when you go into personal information you can set up all of the accounts that you might have spread across the internet to bring in all of the data that you need to the KDE desktop such as Facebook or Google Calendars and Tasks, Google Contacts, your iCal maybe, any IMAP email accounts that you might have etc etc the list goes on this is what i really love about kde it's very much ready to get stuff done and the fact that it works flawlessly with the applications that they have installed like contact you'll instantly see all of your emails your calendar your contacts all showing up here in contact and the back ends that kde that a lot of the kde applications have to talk to each other are very advanced and i really enjoy using them now apart from all the new hardware stuff that you're going to get like the linux kernel 3.11 etc there really isn't too much else that's new with the KDE 4.11 release. There are a few bits and bobs here and there that help to optimize it, but there's not too much that's going to freak users out. They're continually evolving on a gentle curve towards KDE 5, improving the features that weren't so good, and bringing in new functionality where new functionality is due. Now, when it comes to pre-installed applications, you do have a fairly good selection here as far as vanilla KDE goes. As you can see, there's no Firefox or Chrome installed by default. You have an install of the link, but you have Reconk, the web browser that is the official successor to Conqueror. Now, one of the things that I do like about KDE, especially Kubuntu, is the fact that they give you this little notification here saying that 
it's very possible that one of these packages is needed to get the full experience and full functionality out of the application that you're using. This also applies for Amarok when you first install the KDE distribution. You launch Amarok and it will say, hey, you don't have MP3 codecs, would you like them? And it will go out and fetch all the stuff that you need, no questions asked. So I think this is a fantastic feature and one that KDE should be given a pat on the back for. Overall, very nice web browser, but of course if you want functionality and extensions then you're going to have to look elsewhere. There's not too much in the multimedia camp, or any other camp for that matter, but they do give you what you need to get going. And of course, software is easy to install with the Muon Discover Software Center. They also have a new dialog here for about your system that they've included here, so you can know exactly what KDE libs version that you're running, what Qt version we are running, and what kernel, what OS type, etc. So that's nice for a good summary. And also they've improved their documentation as well. So you can see here that they've got extensive documentation for any help that you might need. So would I run this as my daily driver? Well, I don't know, it depends if you like KDE or not. I think KDE keeps getting better and better, as I've said before. And with all of the widgets and fun stuff that you can do with KDE, there's definitely no reason why you shouldn't run it. But it's definitely, I think, going to appeal to the more traditional Windows users who are not really happy with the way that everything is moving towards mobile convergence. So at the end of the day, check it out for yourself and see what you think. It's definitely solid, it's stable, and it's more than capable of handling whatever you throw at it. So what do you guys think of Kubuntu 13.10, the saucy salamander? I like it, to be honest. KDE is a pretty cool desktop nowadays, and if you're willing to put up with a little bit of extra clutter, then you can really make it as powerful as you please. Of course, if you haven't checked out my best KDE distributions of 2013, then there will be links down below that you can check them out. It was a two-part series that I did a couple of weeks ago, and there are some great KDE recommendations in there. Most of them at this stage are up to running 4.11 in their distribution release. But not all of them, so beware of that. Once again, thank you all for watching and liking and subscribing and doing all of that amazing stuff. If you like the video, of course, you can thumb up the video. And if you do like this content on a regular basis, then you can subscribe by hitting that little thing up in the corner there. Once again, thank you all for watching and I will catch you in the very next video where we'll be looking at Zubuntu. Peace out.